What's up, everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy Kenny. Man, it has been a while, y'all, and I've really missed you guys. Um, but remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this um, to this channel. Click my bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all the information I have in the in the description box as well as the comments. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. Now, due to the fact that I suffer from muscle condition, I'm pretty much you know been laying down today but I definitely want to get a video out to you guys because it has been a really long time um, since I've done a video here on YouTube and I definitely need to explain what I've been going through um, so um, I kind of have like a little mukbang thing going on um, May Sunday dinner um, um, fried pork chops macaroni and cheese and uh, you know some uh, string um, green beans so yeah so I thought I so I thought I'd do this little mukbang thing you know have some dinner with you guys and actually um, talk to you guys of what I've been dealing with and uh, why I, why I, you know why I've been MIA so to tell you guys the truth um, what ended up happening with me is that you know a lot of us are kind of going through situations due to COVID Mm. Well, um, due to COVID, some of us are really going through some dire, straight situations, and this is across the globe. And what happened is that um, I ended up suffering from a nervous breakdown. And you know, I've been talking to my therapist and uh, been working through it, taking it one day at a time, and I'm getting a lot better. And then also. Um, you know the stress of the situation has really been taking been taking a toll on me physically as well so I've really been dealt with a lot as many of you have but um I just really wanted to uh, come on here and really discuss some of the trials and tribulations I faced you know even prior to COVID breaking and you know, really become more uh, open with all of you about who Kenneth Stallings is, the creator of the creator of KRS TV, and you know what are the things that um, you know what are some of the struggles that I've been facing, and uh, but yeah, definitely um, my mental health and my physical health has definitely been a challenge lately, and. It's all good because it's it's actually going to make me stronger and I will push through. But um there's also some other things I wanted to share as well as to why I've been MIA. Um for those of you know, I've been doing um YouTube for quite some time. Y'all y'all know I do um I review some of the TV shows. Um I do thoughts and thoughts and commentary on current topics and I have a documentary series that I'm going to be starting up again soon and So I have a lot of good content on my channel. And uh, and also one thing that I do, I also like to do promotions for people's businesses or, you know, events. So I definitely have a lot going on and there's more I want to do in the future um, with this channel and definitely my dream is to get my own streaming where KRS TV will be you know will be like you know Netflix in its own right but uh, I know I got some ways to go there but um, definitely you know you guys supporting me and being there for me is definitely giving me the ammunition to keep going and to keep striving and uh, let me send a personal shout out to my best friend Kenneth Tooks of the K2 Spot. You guys definitely need to check him out. Um, he just recently did a great interview with Shanice Wilson. You know, I love your smile. Um, 
love her you know and she's such a beautiful individual and they have great chemistry so you should definitely go to go to the k2 spots and check out my best friend um um ken of Tooks. and he's been you know doing a lot of interviews on ig live and he's you know i definitely think he has the potential of having his own show like he's really good um, so definitely check out my check out my bestie, and he's definitely been helping me during this hard times that I've been faced with. Um, but uh, let's just say that not only am I dealing with health issues as well as um, you know being quarantined because due to the fact that due to my health issues I can't really be out and about like I used to. Um, I can only leave and go out when it's necessary. So that's been trying on me. But then one thing that I'm definitely going to share with you guys today. These green beans are on the money. But one thing I'm definitely going to share with you guys today is that. Um, there were two instances where people drained my energy. Um, I had two former friends who I used to hang out with that I no longer hang out with anymore. Um, it's just that it was just time for us to go on our go our separate ways, and that was definitely trying on me. Um, but also, as far as um, you know, my business, there were certain situations where I didn't get the upper hand that I deserved to get, or more or. In other words, I didn't actually land the the, um, the opportunities that I that I thought I would land because um, <clears throat> YouTube is a great platform, you know, to get exposure across the world. I mean, some of the greats have come from YouTube. A lot of people who are thriving now in the industry has come from YouTube. And even though I'm a small YouTuber, I definitely love what I do and I actually enjoy it. But then it's gotten to a point where it's no longer fun. And I think I started to lose my joy when I allowed two individuals to come into my life that really didn't mean me any good. Now the first person I'm going to call point A. And the other person I'm going to call point B. For those you, for those who know me, you know who I'm talking about. And in both instances, well, let me let me go here. Um, those of you um, for the past three months, you know, y'all have heard about this whole situation on Wild and Out between um, Emmanuel Hudson and Spoken Reasons. Y'all remember they did that, you know. Ask them all them questions. Ask them all them questions. Ask them all them questions. Making statements. Assume. <laughs> like I, my brother turned me on to the video, and I instantly became a fan. And I, and I definitely loved their chemistry. Their chemistry was great. But everybody was wondering why, after all this time, because it was such a hit, why haven't they collaborated? Um, why haven't they collaborated since then? And. If you watch that while and out, you found out everything because Emmanuel laid that ass out. And it comes to find out that um, when they were doing that collaboration, Spoken Reasons launched a video. And because he launched it first, you know, he's considered the owner. And of course, there was a lot of money generated, but Emmanuel didn't get any of that. Um, and definitely it's it's messed up because they were supposed to be a partnership and they were supposed to release the video at the same time <clears throat> but Spoken launched it on the day that he wasn't supposed to launch it and be because he launched it first he got all the views and Emmanuel even sent some of his fans over there to check out his video so when he so when I saw about that situation and Emmanuel in his IG live talked about how he was naive to how YouTube worked and you know he was green and he got taken advantage of. Let me say I know exactly what Emmanuel was going through. And one thing I definitely want to let people know too is that this you getting taken advantage of can happen at any time and it can happen to anybody. You know, sometimes it ain't about whether you're smart. It's about 
sometimes that you sometimes have to go through some things in order for in order for you to get wiser down the way because um james brown said it that in life you need to know the pros and cons to where you're going and don't get mad and don't get angry get smart well let's just say for a while i've been angry but now i'm getting smart and now i can share this story as to how i can relate to emmanuel in so many ways because it happened to me even though i'm not as a big youtuber as the two of them i went through the same thing with some people you know where you get they seek you out and they bring you in but they only bring you in to rob you not to bless you so this guy point a point a you know found me on social media he was following a lot of my videos um, you know was a very big supporter you know loved my reviews would comment on my stuff and you know we started a friendship online so <clears throat> after a while he invited me to where he worked and he works in the public health industry and he had this social group that he was running but um it wasn't a social group that he created himself it was pretty much a social group that he got by default because the guy who was running it had moved out of state and he brought me in you know because he wanted me to see what he does and you know I was just there to, to lend support because after all he supported me on YouTube so I took it I decided I'll be a sport and go out you know even though this place was like way far from where I live but I made the journey anyway because I wanted to show not only my not only um, my loyalty but also to show that you know I'm very grateful you know because you know the thing about the fans even if they don't financially support you the fact that they even leave a comment or you know get in touch with you and they tell you how they love the stuff that you do it gives you the fuel and the am it gives you the fuel and the ammunition to keep creating great stuff. So I was really, uh, I was really shocked that he reached out to me and invited me out. I went to um, his um, social group setting, and there weren't that many people there, but there was a good energy there. You know, there was a uh, great conversations and things like that, and I vibe that. You know, I like being around. You know really good-minded people and you can discuss things in an open setting and no one's being disrespectful no one's trying to put anybody down but we're you know discussing um discussing thought-provoking topics so that interests me um but then after a while he wanted me to become his co-director because he wanted help to build the um the social networking of his group so I did um, I had created like a little special um, I even created like um, a a uh, YouTube channel for it you know for his social group you know to actually help you know get the word out and things like that um, you know and I did it out of the kindness of my heart you know because I'm thinking okay I'm, um, I've developed a good friendship with this person you know we've met a few times we've hung out you know he's even been to my house you know we break bread together and all that so I'm thinking okay this is a person that you know I vibe and everything is cool and you know I went over and beyond you know helping him with a lot of the things he was was doing with his um with his position um but then after a while things started to take an ugly turn and it happened very sudden uh, uh, one of the things that um, that uh, that he wanted me to do um, with him was like go to different events and stuff like that to promote and that was all good but then one day I came in he literally took a picture that we took together and literally uh, had an artist to make a silhouette and he literally had these flyers as well as business cards of my image never <laughs> discussed it anything with me about it um, and I, I liked it because it was really creative but it's like he made this move without even consulting me and I started to kind of see the writing on the wall. 
I just didn't want to read it. So I have to take the L. And in both situations, in point A and point B, I take the L completely. I take responsibility for my role in it. I'm just telling you that the aftermath of these situations really put me in a very dark headspace. So, um, so now he's, we, we, you know, he set this thing up where he's now has my image on these flyers and it's all about promoting the group. Now, granted, this is, now, granted, keep up with this. He sought me out. He asked me to co-direct his group and he's latched himself on by doing this whole flyer thing with my with 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 both of our images in it like we're this you know like like we're this dynamic duo and the thing about it we we were 100 percent different completely different and i like that because i wanted to work with somebody who was not like me you know someone that i could that i gel with but yet has different qualities you know and i like i'm very diverse when it comes down to human to um to people and me personally i can kick it with anybody if you have a good spirit and you have good intentions cuz i judge you by the content of your character but uh Let's just say um, after the whole image thing, um, uh, the the clinic that he worked for um, pretty much paid for me to get trained because the whole idea was that I was going to become a, a tester as well. You know, someone who worked at the clinic. And the thing, the reason why I wanted it was because you know it gave me ability, it gave me the freedom to be creative and to be artistic because no job I had. I was able I never had that kind of freedom and the thing about it I'm, I'm an artist who's true to himself so I wanted to I, if I'm gonna work for somebody I would want to work in a field where I can be creative and come up with ideas and I can strategize and I can play around and have fun because it's, it's something about the creative process that just thrills me so after all that went down um, you know, I finally started going to training. You know, he had two other people that he was working with that were with me. And, you know, I was helping them throughout the training and all of that. Um, and uh, while I was there, I ran into this individual who I know has a social group and has a very thriving social group within the same area. And he was saying that he's they're going to be doing this town hall meeting. And they wanted me and him to come and um, set up a set up a table, be a vendor at the event to help grow the um, social group. And I was like, "Wow, yeah, I would love to do that. That that's great." Um, but then the funny thing about it is that the following week after I've graduated from the health clinic, and after we got this grand opportunity to become vendors at a great at a big event, our partnership fell apart, and it fell apart. Due to the fact that uh, I was coming up with a lot of ideas for the social group and all of that, and the thing about it, he was a—he was—he's an expert in the public health field. He's worked in that field for about three or so years and was very knowledgeable about it. But when it came down to social networking, it just wasn't there. wasn't there, and for us being YouTubers, social networking is pretty much like fingers to your hands you know what I'm saying it's it's a, it's a natural thing for us youtubers because we're constantly social net networking we're constantly engaging our audiences and meeting people and things like that and I offered a lot of my expertise and at first he was agreeing to a lot of the things I was bringing up we even was coming up with different ideas of different topics we can discuss but then it got to a point where he just started disagreeing with everything I said, but had no rebuttal. Now, it's no it's no problem with disagreeing. I'm open to different um, ways of looking at things, and I know my way is not the only way. But if you're gonna reject someone's thing, you need to have something to rebut. You know, you just can't just shoot people down just because. 
And the fact that he was doing that, but yet had no other alternative to what I was saying, I was beginning to see that, okay, this is personal. And it's coming from a very nasty place. And I was just, in a way, blown away by it because I thought that we were friends. I actually thought that this person, you know, we were building something together. And then all of a sudden, just a week after graduating the program, dude turned on me. And was saying <coughs> was just saying some real dumb shit to me like uh like I don't take rejection well like first of all bruv rejection is a part of all of our lives and rejection is something you can't avoid and it wasn't that I was I didn't take rejection I wasn't taking the bullshit because what I was getting was that you're pretty much serving me bullshit right now and the fact that you you would say I don't take rejection well, where I've had multiple rejections and yet bounce back, that was out of line. And I really wanted to rip his throat out when he said that shit to me. Cause, and I was kind of blown back by it. Like, okay, this person brought me in just to try to break me. And then was saying all this. Then he started saying even more insane things, and even was saying that you didn't tell me what you were gonna do with your meeting and all that, even though we had a meeting about it the week before. But you mean to tell me that with everything we're working on, you don't remember anything? You're not keeping records. You're not. You're just in this position because. You, you you work at the clinic and you run and yet you're you pretty much run the social group that you know by default now you now you think that um you can just talk to people any kind of way and shit now granted I was a volunteer I was not getting paid no money or anything like that but yet this little son of a bitch thought that he could come at me the way he the way he did and it got to the point that while we were on the phone together, I let his ass have it. Because it gets to the point like, I'm a nice guy, but once I reach my breaking point, all bets are off. I don't give a fuck who you are. That's just how I run. I'm a nice person, but don't get it twisted. And sadly, a lot of people get it twisted with me because I am a nice person by nature. And I want to be nice. You know, I don't take pleasure in being mean or disrespectful or being heinous to anybody. But when you do it to me, I'm not just going to let that shit pass. So when the fact that he kept coming at me nasty, I literally ran, you know, went into him and told him how it really is. And told him that you need to cut this bullshit. You're not no fucking victim. You the one on the bullshit. And you need to man the hell up and stop and stop playing around. Because first of all, bro, I've been there for you. As a matter of fact, before we had this falling out that weekend, I helped him carry a rack of stuff to an event that he was doing at a location that he didn't even vet. So, and that's like event planning one on one. You always vet the location. So even though he was doing all this messed up stuff, I still was being supportive. And then the week, like literally after, it's like literally after Sunday, Monday, he started with all the bullshit. And I was just kind of questioning where it was all coming from because it didn't make any sense to me. But then it started to kind of reek the fact that, okay, this person has some very, you know, deep hate and resentment towards me that I didn't even see was there. Like the whole time you smiling on my face, you literally, you literally hated me. And it even threw people away that was involved, like, um, like when it came down to uh, the, the actual event that we was going to do. And I literally hit them up and let them know that we're no longer working together. They were surprised, like, dang, what happened? And me personally, I wasn't trying to ruin old boy, so I wasn't going to tell all the particulars at the time. So I kind of kept it to myself. But, uh, <laughs> well, let's just say my eyes opened when I went to that town hall meeting. Because even though we were, good, we were supposed to be there as vendors, being a part of it, due to the fact that our partnership fell apart, you know, that was, that was out the window. So I just, just decided to go on my own to see, what it, to see, to see the turnout. And, let, and I will say it was a great event. 
and a little bit after that, um, I had talked to an associate of mine, you know, who I've known for years. Um, he's a really great guy. He was actually the MC of the event, and we talked afterwards. And you know, the funny thing about it is that um, I also ran into him at another event when I was working with Point A. And he, when we and him had a conversation, and I let him know about me working with Point A, he pretty much told me straight up that I don't like him. And I was like, wow. And he told me that if I'm driving my car, I'm going to scream, Kenny, get out of the way so I don't hit you, but I'm running that bitch over. Like, <laughs> like when he told me that, I just cracked up. I was like, wow, this child is everything. But I just told him that, look, I'm not here to rock the boat. And I kept that to myself. You know, I didn't say anything because I'm like, okay, you know, you, if y'all have issues, then y'all need to solve that amongst yourselves. I'm not gonna stir up any bullshit. So I, I kept my, I kept it, I kept it quiet. But then after all that went down with point A, and I ran into him again, and he was like, yeah. And I like the fact that he didn't coddle me because I was really kind of, my heart was kind of heavy around the time because I, I was really hurt by the whole situation because. I broke bread with your ass. I introduced you to my family, and this is how you do me? Like, seriously, bruh? After you said that if we have issues, we can just talk to it amongst ourselves, but then because I literally wasn't going to take your bullshit and I called you out, you decide to then shoot an email to all of the other... Um, people in the um in the clinic saying that you know you no longer want to mention me and I'm no longer a part of the social group and you know um if y'all want to work with him you can just kind of just threw me away like I was nothing when yet I was doing the most work for him and as a matter of fact they liked us as a team so much that when they would have in special like you know employee meetings they allowed me to be a part of them which I found really interesting because I wasn't an employee I was just a volunteer but when I saw old boy again at the town hall meeting he was like I told you I ain't like him right and I was like yeah you did say that but I didn't go into detail as to why but then he said something to me that really struck a chord he was like how are you gonna build a good social group when your reputation is tarnished I was like, ding, 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 like, oh shit. That explains why, no matter what I did or how much I put out there, nothing was working. So, I could say it was God that got me out of that situation because obviously this person never meant good to me from from the gate. This person sought me out to destroy me or sought me out to hurt me, and I really did take that hard because I go out I go out of my way in this world to do good for people and to do good to others and when people shit on me it really hurts me deeply because I'm a kind of person that wears his heart on his sleeve I don't have a poker face or anything of that caliber I'm I'm just a, I'm just an authentic dude and what you what you see is what you get so uh So, um, after all that went down, I was like, wow. And I liked, you know, when Emmanuel was doing his rhyme on loving, on, um, Wildin' Out, where he was like, the only reason why you're on this, the only reason why you're on, on the stage is because my name is attached to it. I also figured out the same thing after that town hall meeting when I talked to my associate um, a friend of mine where he told me look don't nobody really fuck with him because he has a tarnished reputation he's burnt a lot of bridges in this community um, and the only reason why we were gonna give we were gonna make you a make you guys a vendor at our event was because you were a part of it so I'm like bro you was only getting an opportunity because I was attached to it and 
it, it's just crazy how people will bring you in and then try to screw you afterwards and it's even more hurtful when it comes from your own people and in both cases in point A and point B which I'm now about to get into that's what happened now point B point B reached out to me through social media they watched the stuff I was doing on social media watched my YouTube channel and they wanted me to do some promos you know for certain events and things that they had going on which I did no problem um, but then again I have to take the L because I was supposed to handle my business and I was still new and green so I was just doing all this stuff hoping that this person will finally either help me out or invest in me or put me in front of people who got the money you know what I'm saying because I'm trying to be independent I'm trying to be self-made and I'm trying to build great connections you know as far as my business platform and the things that I'm trying to do so this person just you know you know he's a good confidant or whatever but you know he he never invested not a dime in anything I did and it got to the point where it really started to affect me emotionally and it started to affect me emotionally physically and everything because it's like you know you try to do good for people but why aren't people looking out for me And pretty much the real reason was because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And I should have, we should have had a contractual agreement before I decided to do anything with them. So it got to the point where this person then brought me onto their team, gave me a title. But the thing is, what good is a title if it don't cut any checks? Just saying. Not being mean, just being honest. You know, what good is a title if it doesn't cut any checks? <laughs> so, here it is. I have a title. Um, anytime they need anything from me, I'm always there. Always delivering. You know, always producing. But, none of this is coming my way. And... The thing about it, he's saying that, you know, the company doesn't have any money and all of that, but... The funny thing about it, um, the company don't got money, but you do. And last time I checked, you the one that sought me out. I didn't seek you out at all. So why won't you just do the right thing? And I was hoping, and that was where I failed. Hope is dangerous. You can be hoping for something, and you will be hoping forever, and nothing will change. And yet, <laughs> you know, that was where I went wrong. You know, the fact that I was hoping that these people was going to do right by me. And <clears throat> it just got to the point after a while, I started to see, um, I started to see the, the trees and I started to smell the coffee and I decided that, you know, I'm not making any more moves or not doing any more promotions unless you pay me. Because... You know, now granted, I've done a lot of work with this person. Like, I've literally done like years work, you know, for this, for this individual. But hoping that they will just do the right thing. But that's where I fucked up. I was hoping for it. Instead of making sure that <coughs> from the gate, this is what I want. This is what I want. Um, this is what I want to be compensated. And see if it was something that was negotiable and if it wasn't then I shouldn't have done anything so I get where Emmanuel's coming from in that whole situation because you really can get taken advantage of and all you're trying to do is do the right thing and you know you had a lot of people saying oh he was dumb <laughs> you know he <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. He's like, oh, he was dumb. He should have did this and he should have did that. But at the end of the day, if you don't got the right people around you, how the hell you, are you supposed to know these things? <sighs> oh, yeah. And this is um, peach mango iced tea. Shit is bomb. So... You got all this shit going on. 
But just as you know what went down with the manual and spoken reasons, I woke the hell up. Um, I now have a a business consultant with um, Small Business Association, and I'm gonna make some moves. And you know, from here on out, you know, if people want to work with me or collaborate with me, we gotta talk negotiations up front, and there will be in writing, <laughs> you know, contractual agreements, like you know. It, it gets to the point where, you know, you want to do the right thing, but the right thing is protecting yourself and protecting your brand. And I've pretty much had to take these L's for me to learn how to W. So I think I now am in a, in a good place where I, I, I can finally move forward with my platform here with um, KRS TV, my um, podcast, The T Zone. Um, I'm also got a, a new project that I'm working on. You know, once I can upgrade my technology and upgrade my lab, that's when I'll start to do this, um, to do this other project that I want to do. And also, I want to, you know, get on here and, you know, really talk to you guys because I miss you guys I mean I really do miss doing the reviews and trust me I've watched the show so I will be doing like one video per show to kind of you know tie into everything that happened because I can't do every episode now that would be very taxing but I do still owe you guys a review response to certain of the episodes and I can kind of you know give you all of my quirkiness that I normally do in these videos but um I actually want to thank you all for your love and support. Um, and I, I thank, you know, and also I want to reach out to um, Kevin Green. You know, Kevin, you know, I really, really appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for checking in on me. You know, he was up in my comments like, hey, when you coming back? Uh, what's going on? Is everything okay? You know, and was giving me encouraging words. So definitely shout out to Kevin Green. Um I really do appreciate you, brother, and God bless you, you know, for, you know, looking out for me. And as I, and at the time, I was really in a very dark place, and I just needed a break away from social media after everything that's been going on, you know, not only with, um, you know, COVID, but also the, the tense environment after the brutal murder of George Floyd. Yes, and I said murder. And... It just really broke me, and I was just so filled with, with rage and anger that I needed to step away, and I just needed to get myself right. So, uh, get down in those comments and let me know your thoughts on these things that I've shared, and, you know, if you guys have positive, you know, advice or whatever you could give my way, I'm, I'm all ears, you know, and I just ask that you respect me. You know, and because I give nothing but respect to all of you. And I also just want to put out there that um, I, I'm very, very grateful for this platform because I really love doing what I do. And I really love the fact that I get to interact with you. So feel free to interact with me more. You know, hit me up on social media and all of my social media platforms. Um, if you can, you know, make donations to my cash app and to my um, PayPal. You know, hey, a dollar, a, you know, a dollar is 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 good enough. You know what I'm saying? So I just really want to, you know, continue to build my business, build my platform. You know, continue to build my audience and to show that you know I'm definitely somebody that is going places and I don't forget where I come from. But I know where I want to go. So that's all everybody. So until next time everybody. Take care.